What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today will be episode 41 of Vacuum Saved. Now, this episode is happening right after I just acquired half of these machines, so that's why you are seeing this episode being rushed out very quickly, as these machines in the front in particular are very interesting and I want to be able to try them and see how well they work, and what better way to test them all at once than Vacuum Saved. So, real quick story behind all these, and then we'll immediately get into running them. This episode is not going to waste any time, other than Boots at the beginning, but that's not a waste of time. I mean, look at her. She's beautiful. Look at the beautiful potato. Anyways, so, ooh, zoomed in. So, as of yesterday, when I am filming this, this three vacuums, these three vacuums, I acquired from another collector in a trade for my SIBO Automatic X5. So, I got a Phantom Thunder, a Bissell Power Glide Ultra, and a Nilfisk Advanced Power 112, which is, from what I've been told, a rebranded Lindhouse. I don't know much about these, but fun. This is a Hoover Lynx signature that I actually got from my grandma. Uh, she gave it to me because she's no longer alive, so she doesn't need it. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, um... I did get it because I asked if anyone wanted it whenever we were cleaning out her apartment, and nobody wanted it, so I got it. And it's pretty much identical to my Lynx, but it's just the signature edition. So, and I actually did refurbish this for her about a week before she passed on, so it's not in too bad of a shape. I did use it to clean her apartment while we were getting everything cleaned up, so there's some leaves and random junk in there, so I'll have to clean that out. But... We'll go ahead and start with this, since it is cordless anyway, so there isn't really much to plug in. But it works perfectly, because, if we're being honest, by the time she got this, I don't remember who actually bought this for her, but by the time she got this, she had a first-gen Lynx a long time ago. That, I think, died. She got this, but by the time she got it, she couldn't really get around as much anymore, so she couldn't really handle using it anyways, so the only times it was really used was either when I used it or whenever the place, the home that she was staying at, whenever we would have like a family event in one of the, in one of the common areas, and then usually I would use this to clean up the crumbs and stuff afterwards, uh, you know, make sure the place is all clean. So that's pretty much that. So it does work, and we can run it real quick. I do like the black color on this. For some reason, this one doesn't like to stand up. For some reason, it really likes to fall backwards. It doesn't click in place as well as my silver one does, but not a big deal. So, I can run this real quick. I almost feel like the brush wall on this is a little bit more aggressive than the non-signature variant. But, that is that. Not much to say about that. Nothing really wrong with it. It just was no longer needed. So it's now joined my collection. Uh, because I, I made sure that nobody else needed it, but... Nope, nobody wanted it, so I took it. And of course everyone was like, come on Chance, take the vacuum. So, that is that. So, next we have these three machines, which again, like I mentioned, I acquired in a trade for a SIBO X5, so that is very nice. So we'll actually run these from right to left because this Phantom has like some weird sand on it and I've been trying to clean it, it hasn't been going very well. This is the heaviest of the bunch, actually the Phantom might be heavier, but this Lindhouse for some reason has a SIBO hose and wand on it, I'm not sure why that is, but if it works, it works. So, this is grounded, so I hope... I don't know where the power button is on this. I didn't even realize that. I assume it's that green button, but I'm about to find out. So, we'll plug this in real quick and see if it runs. 
for the record, since this was a trade for my SIBO, which is an expensive vacuum, these all are supposed to run. But I know I did see a video that he posted on this and that. I didn't see anything about the Phantom, but he said it worked and had no problems. So, I don't know how to adjust the height on this, so we'll just go for it. I think there's a bag in here. Uh, probably better check that. There's no easy way to undo this cable. I guess we'll just turn it on. That's weird. For some reason the hose doesn't want to come out of here. Oh, because it's not a SIBO, so it's obviously not going to have this locked in. But for some reason the hose had, like, no suction. I'm not sure why that is. Something I'll have to look into, and obviously I'll have to replace the hose with the genuine one anyways. It also is a little hard to push on my carpet, but it is very quiet. I love how quiet it is. He did say that it uses uh, Panasonic U-Bags, which I do have some of those, so I'm good on that front. So I mainly just need to find a hose and attachments for it, and it should work. It groomed pretty well. Didn't hear much in terms of agitation, but I'm sure it's there. And I do love how quiet it is. So it actually sounded like a Phantom, ironically. Like it had that kind of... Um, like lower pitched smooth sounding motor so that's fun I also noticed that it has a little bit of damage right there but I'm pretty sure that was in the photo so I'm not too worried about that alright next is the Bissell Powerglide Ultra this is definitely not the right attachment for it so I do need to get a set of attachments now I do have an extension wand and a crevice tool that will fit on the machine and I do have plenty of combo tools that will fit on the hose but this uses the old style combo tool, so I'll need to find one of those. I think I did find one, but it was like $15. So if anyone has one of those, let me know. So this is a Bissell Power Glide Ultra. This is one I've been wanting to add to the collection for quite some time. So, and I, there's another collector that might be selling me a Bissell Power Track as well, so I hope I get that. In fact, they were planning on selling me a Power Track and a Thunder, ironically completely separate person so hopefully I do get those because that would be nice uh, but yeah tested well I would hope so so cord appears to be in good shape hose yeah see it's the old style the, this weird weird looking hose I did wipe these machines down with a disinfecting wipe so they look okay but they're not perfect some of these were just very dirty. So, see right there, Power Glide Ultra. Filtrate filtration technology from 3M. Obviously, that's not relevant anymore because it's just a standard HEPA filter. Door works just fine. Not sure if the headlight works. I think it did. I remember seeing a video on this, but I'm blanking on what it showed. Pedal is good. Hose is very stretchy, and since it is the old style, it's not a twist and snap, so you do have the moving hose, which I do like. And right there, we can see from the 166th day of 2001, so this is a very early power glide. To my knowledge, these were not on the market for very long. Model 3545-5, so very nice. Very, very nice indeed. I do really love this machine already. I can just tell because it has all the things I like about the Power Force, but I like the design of it. 
I like the design of this style base and just the little accents. And I like having the stretch hose and the really long cord while still, oh no. Damn it, the cord's torn. That sucks, because this is the really nice type of cord that's like really smooth. Um, and it has the more height adjustments and the headlights, but it doesn't have the wide base, which I actually prefer this. So this is my favorite power glide out of all of them, so I'm very happy to have this. And this probably is my favorite Bissell as well, because again, it has everything I like about these machines. Now some people say all oh, these Bissells are junk, and yeah, sure, the bagless ones are to an extent, but this thing with the HEPA bag in it, can you really complain? Filtration on this is fine, obviously I need to wash the bag door, but it has a HEPA bag in it. Let's see, where's the... Yep, pre motor filter looks good, needs cleaned it looks like. Still got the tray in there, that's another thing I like about the Power Glides, they have the actual tray, like a Hoover Tempo. They're not cheaped out like the Power Force. You can tell the build quality on this is much better than a Power Force. This is a lot sturdier. This this is a lot sturdier than it is on a Power Force. And it goes on a lot more gracefully too. It just very easily pops off and clicks on, whereas the Power Force you have to really yank it. A little dent right there. Looks like a smiley face. Quiet performance. Yeah, that's kind of ass but a lot of people make fun of that but the truth is when you compare this to like what was on the market at the time which is a lot of direct air crap like the hoover bra hoover bravos and the you know eureka elites and all that like when you compare it to something like that yeah this is super quiet compared to those because those are screamers and this is a normal vacuum look at the bottom of this real quick too that needs cleaned. These brush roll, this brush roll has like no bristles at all. So it spins fine, but I'm probably gonna change this brush roll because there is no way these, there is no way this is effective. Uh, and all this needs cleaned, but looks good. Looks good. So let's see what this does. I did. I do need to clean it because the height adjustment makes a crunchy noise when you swivel it. There's a bunch of crap in there. So let's see what this does. Okay, I just turned this off because it smells really bad. I do not know why it smells that bad. It smells awful. It's like... Ugh. I don't know what that is. I hope that's not a burning smell. That would really suck if I got it and the motor burned up in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that brush roll is, you know... It's rare on a Bissell that, that, that the actual, you know, bristles wear out, because normally on a Bissell, the bearings are what go out, and they go out usually very prematurely, but on these power glides, based on my sample size of two, it seems like they were built a lot better. So, that's that. Oh, hi, Boot. What you doing? She is video bombing this thing a lot, isn't she? Hi. Do you like the Bissell? Okay, that's... Ma'am, do you have to lick your butt? You're on YouTube. Look at you. Okay. Well, that is that. I don't know why it smells like it's burning. Hopefully that's just something in the bag and not something actually burning, burning. But, uh, yeah. Regardless, that is the Bissell Power Glide Ultra. And we'll move on to the next one. Finally, at least finally in terms of this lot of three, we still have the other three to get to, we have the Phantom Thunder, which 
Thankfully, it does have the cord clip, which I don't have, and it does have the attachment holster and the crevice tool, which both of these I actually need. So I'm actually very happy. Sure, it could have a full set of attachments, but I would not expect that. I did just wash the crevice tool and this little adapter. I actually needed a crevice tool, and I otherwise have a full set of thunder attachments. So I can put my full set of thunder attachments on this, and then put this crevice tool on my Fury that needs one. So that worked perfectly. So this one's pretty, pretty gross. Even after I wiped it down with the disinfecting wipe twice, there's a bunch of like sand or something weird on it. I don't know what this is or how I can get that off. This thing clearly sat in storage for a long time and was not cleaned. Obviously the bumper needs fixed. And I noticed this has the same issue, unfortunately, that my Orange Fury has, which is why you haven't seen that in a while, where the, see, at least it's, it's only on this side, but on this side, the brush roller, while it does spin, th this belt is shot, I can feel it, this brush roll on this side is loose. So there is some vertical play in the housing. It appears like it's hopefully just not on all the way. See right there, it doesn't look like the base is on all the way. So hopefully that's just the only issue. So I'll run it very sparingly, but I will pull the brush to the bottom so it hopefully doesn't get in the way. This does seem very similar to the Thunder that I had as a kid. So it has the reset switch. It's got a patent thing on there. I don't know if you can read that. You can Google those patents. Model F12051, 1998. And those screws do not look good. Oh, that looks really chewed up. That doesn't even look like the right screw. I wasn't aware that these screws were replacements. So, my Destiny Plus doesn't even have the screws. So it seems like I need two sets of hood screws for a Thunder. So if anyone has those, let me know. So, I haven't looked at the bin or the filter or anything like that. I don't know if I want to. I don't want to get dust everywhere. But, uh... We'll still give it a run. Hopefully it runs. What? Uh, it's plugged in. The power strip is working. I plugged it into the same plug that all the other ones were plugged into. What? Don't tell me the Phantom doesn't work. Okay. Well, there is a reset button. Oh! <laughs> that just blew a bunch of dust in my face. <coughs> okay. So the reset button tripped for some reason. Oh, God. Oh, well, I did get it to turn on.
Wow, it does work. Puffed out a good amount of dust, but it does work. So, these Phantoms are just, at least the Thunders, are just tanks. Like, I can't imagine how much dust and crap is in the motor. And it still sounds like a brand new Thunder. It puffed out all that dust and, you know, sure you could say ew, bagless, but, you know, any Elite that was the same age as this would do the same thing, if we're being honest. Old vacuums are going to do that. And, uh, yeah, it still sounds fine. Nice and quiet, sounds good. On the high mode, it's actually surprisingly easy to push on my carpet, which I did not expect. Because, you know, this thing's a, built like a brick, you know, a brick house. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's very heavy, it's very tank-like. And it works. So, took a little bit of fiddling with it, but it does work. So that's good. Boot. 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 Okay, so now we have this for car. I got this for $20 at my local Habitat for Humanity, or at least it's uh, one of them. It's actually not that local, but I happen to be there. And they had this for $20, so I bought it. It came with a bunch of bags. I don't know where the bags are, but I know it came with a bunch of them. So that's fun. They also had a Eureka Maxima, or uh, Lightspeed. And that one was $30 for some reason. And this expensive vacuum was 20 And then they had a swivel sweeper for 10 And a San and a Sanyo built canister that I regret not getting, but I didn't realize that's what it was at the time. So, it doesn't have any attachments, unfortunately. Uh, so that's not good. Boots, what's wrong? You got an itch? Are you okay? Boots! She must have a really bad itch for some reason. You okay, Boots? You okay? Okay. So, it works, it just needs a belt, the belt's really stretched out, and it needs a set of attachments. And it, it's a little beat up, but it works. It's a Recar Vibrance of some kind, I don't know the model, but it's, it's a Recar. Made in the USA, made in Missouri. Lovely Missouri. Although not anymore, but at the time this was, existed, it was. Which is nice. Anyways, all right, we've got this piece of junk Bissell. I bought this off locally off someone for ten dollars. I kind of shouldn't because I already have one. I forgot that at the time. So, since I already have it, have one, I'm gonna steal a turbo brush off of it, maybe the other tool, and I'm gonna throw this away. Uh, well, maybe I'll probably actually sell this to another collector if they want it. And if they don't want it, I'll throw it away, because I don't care. Uh, or I'll throw it in the basement and part it out. I don't know. That's probably what's realistically going to happen, because any any vacuum is discontinued, I'll probably hold on to it, because 
where else are you going to find parts for it? But other than that, you know, the motor sounds really bad. The brush roll bearings sound bad. Brush roll doesn't spin because the bearings are locked up. Obviously, this sat in someone's shed for a while with way too much moisture. And obviously, as a result, the thing is in poor condition as a result. Hi, Boot. So, that, that's all there is to it. It sounds bad. It's not the worst. But you're going to know exactly what I mean when I turn it on. It actually sounds worse since the last time I turned it on. So it's so even just from it sitting, it's getting worse and worse. So, I mean, the headlight works at least. At least it looked like it did. The sensors do work on the top. And it has all the filters with it, so it seems like, you know, they... Like, it's, it's not like they, uh, you know, misused it. It just clearly sat in storage for a long time, and I wasted money on it because it runs like crap. But if I can find some sort of use for it, then that's fine. And, um, yeah, so I'm definitely more likely to chunk, chuck that dirt double in the dumpster than I am this thing uh, from, the last, from the last vacuum save. But, eh, we'll see. I still like the color on it. That's what I like about the other one. <sighs> you can tell how boring it is because it's making me yawn. So, on to the last vacuum. Alright, here we have a Kenmore Progressive canister that I got for free. Someone in our neighborhood was moving. And they decided to get rid of this along with some other stuff. So we grabbed it. That's all there is to it. It's a model 116. So that's that. It has it has the turbo brush with it, but yeah, there's a turbo brush. But no floor tool, and it doesn't even have a spot for any normal tools for some reason. And this doesn't like to go back in. For whatever reason. It it's clearly trying to break. So and there's nothing wrong with it. It came with a bunch of bags. I'm spoiling it, aren't I? It came with a bunch of bags, and they're like, yeah, it works. We just didn't, don't need it anymore. I forgot. I think I asked them what they got. I think they just got a different machine. I think they said they went cordless. I don't know. But this is one of the nice ones. It has a, you know, control on the handle and all that. You know, carpet floor, suction control, all that happy stuff. So... This is really loose, and I hate this. I hate canisters that do this, but yeah, if it works, it works. See, you can see right there the thing I hate about this. I go to twist this to obviously rotate the nozzle, and this just twists, and the nozzle just slams into the leg. Like, I don't know what the point of having a joint right here is. I don't understand the purpose of that. But other than that, this machine's not horrible. The power head did just fall down. But yeah. So that works. And that will conclude this episode of Vacuum Saved, featuring my cat, Boot. And her name is very fitting because she's licking her feet right now. So, this was Intellitech Studio signing out with episode 41 of Vacuum Saved. Please subscribe and like, unless you don't want to. But if you do want to, please do, because... My birthday's coming up soon, and it'd be really cool if I got to 10,000 subs before my birthday. It's probably not going to happen, but one can hope. Speaking of hope, I hope you like this video for the boot. Look at her, she's so cute. Boot! Oh, boot! Where'd she go? Where'd she go?
Boots, quit licking your feet. 